Okay, so last week I read and reviewed Whole Cake Island, and apparently I had a lot of different opinions from everybody else. And I kind of want to talk about that. So one of the things that I went ahead and praised Whole Cake Island for was its pacing, something that a lot of people did not agree with. Now, we can have differing opinions, but I wanted to know why, and I found the answer pretty interesting. For an entire year now, I have been reading and then pausing and then reviewing the arcs, and that is very different to how other people have read One Piece. I think it's possible that a lot of us had a very similar experience at the beginning, where we were all reading and catching up to One Piece, but now that we're pretty close to the end, we're like, I'm at like chapter 900 something now. I think a lot of people caught up and started reading Whole Cake Island weekly, and I think that drastically affects your pacing. I mean, like, it, it has to, right? If you're just reading something and then you have to stop and wait a week to read it again, that's going to be extremely different from me who instead gets to sit down and experience the whole thing all at once. This was uh, repeated a lot in the comments where people were reading it weekly and were so tired of seeing Big Mom saying wedding cake, which I didn't think it was that bad. But I guess if you're reading it week by week and you're like, oh, great, another wedding cake chapter, I... <laughs> I can see how that could get pretty uh, tiring after a bit. For me, it felt a little bit more refreshing because we normally get fights at the end of the arc. So to instead have a chase sequence felt very different compared to everything else that we've had so far. But yeah, the wedding cake sequence where Big Mom just is constantly saying, I want that wedding cake, give it to me now. Yeah, it did go on for a little bit too long, I will admit. But I have that issue with, I think, every arc in One Piece. I think you could fix like every arc in one piece. If you just cut down like five or 10% of every arc that comes with a cost. And that's the fact that there's so many other things that happen during that chase sequence that I think would be diminished if we didn't stretch it out for as long as we did. Now, I think I would much rather fix other arcs like Alabasta or Skypea's pacing issues before I changed anything from Whole Cake Island. And, <laughs> and that might be a controversial take. But then again, when it comes to Alabasta and Skypea, my problems with those is that the fight scenes drag on for a little bit too much in both the anime and the manga. And that's what I would trim down. Meanwhile, for Big Mom, it's not a fight, it's an escape sequence. And so I'm okay with that. I think another big factor to this might actually be the anime. Now, for almost every arc, I have read the manga and used the anime as complementary material. So to me, the length doesn't really matter because I've already experienced that arc and everything else is just extra. But I can totally imagine that if you had to sit down and watch this entire arc, you would have a way different experience than I did. I think Whole Cake Island in the manga is 50 to 75 chapters, and I think in the anime it's like over a hundred or something like that. I don't know. It's a crazy number. Uh, I don't know how you do that. All right. Now look, whenever there is credit to give, I will give it. All right. I don't think stretching things out, <laughs> get it? Stretching things. I don't think stretching things out is inherently bad for the anime. I went ahead and spent a lot of my review in Sabaody praising the anime sections because they added a lot of complimentary material that elevated the text. But here it's, <laughs> but here's a lot. Like, I can't keep defending you. Okay, speaking of the anime, I know that it technically does drag out, but I'm not inherently against the idea of stretching out the length if it showcases us uh, some exclusive shots that we didn't get to see in the manga. Like in Dress Rosa, for example, we had Zoro versus Pika, and in the manga at least, I thought it was okay we got to see Zoro slash Pika in half, at least the rock version of Pika, and we got to learn a little bit about him coding the hockey, uh, infusing hockey into his sword. Now in the manga, we got this beautiful double spread, we got a few good panels, and that was it. And after I made the Dressrosa review, I went back and watched the Zoro vs. Pika fight in the anime and saw what could have been. Like, yes, the sequence is way longer than in the manga, but also a lot of what we're doing is elevating the text. Instead of seeing Zoro being launched and then we cut to the double spread of him slicing the mountain in half, the uh, Pika... 
we are instead shown a very lengthy sequence where he gets launched up into the air and he has a lot of hang time. It's like he's getting launched from one side of the island to another as he is getting ready to cut Pika in half. And on the one hand, we are stretching out the length, but on the other hand, it is putting a lot more intensity into the scene than I think was originally there. Now, there has been some moments where the anime has tried that and it hasn't worked that well, but I think this was a very good shot. It was the same thing when we saw Law cut a mountain in half in Punk Hazard. Again, I didn't talk about it much when I reviewed Punk Hazard because we again saw a few lead-up panels and then a double spread page. And that was practically it. But in the anime, there is so much buildup to seeing this mountain being sliced in half. We get like a slow zoom out until we get the entire view of the mountain cleanly cut in half. So I've realized that there's like a benefit to reading the material a lot slower than I typically would. And that is the fact that in a review format, for example, if you were to review one chapter, it would be dramatically different from reviewing five chapters. And reviewing five chapters is dramatically different to reviewing the entire arc or half of the arc. And I think one of the things that the anime has been able to do is refresh a lot of the memories of a particular scene or of the particular moment in the arc and showcase it again in this new redesigned format. Okay, so during Thriller Bark, we were starting to see the Straw Hats reaching their limit, and it was only a matter of time until we hit a breaking point in which we had to do something, whether it was a training arc or maybe the power of teamwork. And while we did get a time skip, we also kind of did get the power of teamwork because the new world is very teamwork oriented. Like sure, the first half of the Grand Line was always kind of a teamwork effort, right? The Straw Hats ended up teaming with whoever was on that respective island, like Vivi or Rebecca or Shirahoshi, for example. But now, in the new world, you're teaming up with other rookies all of the time. I kind of love that premise for the new world. It's something that I wasn't expecting. Like, not only does this make it more interesting in fights, since we're essentially reusing a lot of characters that we already know, like Capone or Law, there is also a really strong element of uncertainty. You don't know if anyone's going to backstab you. You don't know if someone's going to join the enemy team instead. And we saw a lot of that in Whole Cake Island. Like, everyone has their own secret goals that you don't know about. It makes team-ups and revelations so unpredictable. In Whole Cake Island, it is an arc heavily focused on appearance, which makes this deception premise even more convincing. We have the actual wedding and the cast who are in it, like Katakuri or Sanji or Pudding. And we have unexpected team-ups that enhance that particular experience. Okay, so I mentioned this a little bit in Zoe, but I've been thinking about this a lot more when I came to Whole Cake Island, because I have been thinking about spirals. Like, spirals are a very weird, subtle motif in One Piece. Like, spirals are in the smoke, they're in clouds, they're in abilities character use, they are literally in the devil fruits. And for Whole Cake Island, we have Sanji, who has the spiral eyebrow and all of the relatives of Sanji who also have spiral eyebrows. And as you're reading more and more about Whole Cake Island, you start to realize that there are a lot of spirals in a lot of these shapes, even if there is almost no context to them. Because Devil Fruits were the first things to have spirals, I instantly thought that everything that had spirals were related to Devil Fruits. But then now we have things like Zanisha in Zoe that had spirals around it when Zanisha probably didn't have a devil fruit. Normally when characters with devil fruit abilities create smoke or clouds or dust, it creates spiral patterns. But here in Whole Cake Island, we get to see spiral patterns created by people who don't have a devil fruit. And because they're everywhere, you start to wonder why? Like, why are they everywhere? What purpose are these spirals serving? And I think the idea I've come to is that spirals bring out this theme of otherworldliness. 
we can see it in the Germa technology, which is so fantasy at that point that it might as well be otherworldly. Again, I talked about Zoe, which has a bunch of talking minks who are just sentient bipedal animals. Again, Zoe is extremely otherworldly, and I think maybe spirals are designed to emphasize that. All right, here's where it all comes crumbling down for me, understandably. I think, because I said that the fights in Whole Cake Island, specifically the Katakuri versus Luffy fight, was okay. Like, just okay. And you know what? The more I think about it, that was a bad take. I could do better. So most of my complaints with fights in One Piece aren't even about the fights themselves, but rather the structure around them. One Piece has a very specific formula of going to this island, discovering the inhabitants, identifying the problem, usually a bad guy, and then we punch the bad guy. Except a lot of time is usually taken up by punching the bad guy, so by the time that I hit this part, I usually gotta brace myself for like 20 chapters of fighting. Like, there were a lot of comments saying that, oh, no, Big Mom chasing someone for 20 chapters, that was painful. To me, it's like that, but with the fights. In Alabasta, it was fighting Baroque Works before we even got to fight Crocodile. In Whole Kick Island, that was Cracker and all of the other goons before we got to fight Katakuri, which isn't even technically, like, the bad guy who we were going for. Well, I came to realize that the Katakuri fights were actually good. I think it's these mid-level fights that are a requirement to build up to the much badder guy that usually hurt the pacing for me. Like, yeah, apparently from the comments, almost everyone liked the Katakuri fight, but I don't think a single person mentioned the Cracker fight in my review, except for, like, one person who said that he hated the fight. <laughs> But okay, let's talk about the Katakuri versus Luffy fight, because I got some positive things to say about it. Because while my main critique of the fight was mostly based off the manga, after the review, I watched the anime, and oh boy is it different. Like, purely discussing the physical fight, fights in general, I think, are animation strong suit. I think that Gear 4 Snake Man in particular struggles with showcasing movement in manga panels. Like in the manga panels, we just see all of the bouncing around happen in a single frame, whereas in the anime, we get to see a lot more of the weight and movement emphasized through, as you probably would have guessed, animation. It is, <laughs> all right, maybe this one is going to be a controversial take. It's where I think the pacing enhances the fight. Like to some degree, it is stretching out the length of the fights. But on the other hand, it has a few moments where we are able to embrace and highlight some of the fights in a way that you can't really do in the manga. Also, can we get deeper into the core of the fight? Because for as much as we get gomu gomu, mochi mochi, punch 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 action, right? There is a lot more to a fight than just the physical fight on the surface. I think the Katakuri versus Luffy fight, especially in the anime, feels very serious. Like, this is a raw fight. There are a few fights in One Piece that I consider to be respectable fights of willpower. And I think this one fits that criteria extremely well. A really big theme in Whole Cake Island is enduring without displaying pain during hardship. Every character in Whole Cake Island endures pain and covers it. We got Pudding with the wedding. We got Katakuri who hides his true self, never revealing who he actually is. We have Sanji who pushes away others while clearly not being okay. And Katakuri vs. Luffy is the pinnacle of enduring hardships. It's one of the reasons why it is such a raw fight. Luffy and Katakuri are playing two sides of the same coin here. Like, Katakuri's whole personality is an illusion. He has built himself up for the sake of other people. He tries not to rely too much on anyone else and ask for help because of backlash. Which, to be honest, I mean, it, that did happen. And trying not to rely on anyone else is something that Luffy strongly opposes. Like, Luffy is the pinnacle of the ask-me-for-help guy. And throughout this entire fight, Katakuri is constantly questioning Luffy's resilience, while Luffy is maybe naively persistent in spite of danger. Katakuri is instead quite literally, textually, 
thinking of what could go wrong. Luffy, over the course of the fight, is attempting to see Katakuri for who he really is, especially once Katakuri finally puts his guard down. Even the abilities have this, like while Katakuri sees the future in order to predict danger, Luffy appears to use his ability to predict where his target might be, and he is shifting Katakuri's worldview throughout the fight. Until eventually, Katakuri is fighting, not caring for what people see him for. By the end of the fight, for the first time, Katakuri is nearly out of the fight, and he forces himself back up. That resilience that he had been critiquing Luffy for is now something that he too is adapting. Is that is that one better? I, <laughs> I think that take is better. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I'm glad I actually got to come back to the fight and give it a second look. Uh, thanks to all my patrons who have just been fighting for months and finally defeated each other. Only for me to come out of nowhere and say that the fight, uh, eh, it was just okay. Okay. <laughs>